Hey guys, welcome back to our old farmhouse. My name is Corey and on today's video we're talking about five ways you can predator proof your chicken run. Alright guys, rather than just listening to me, I figured I would show off how our chicks are doing. Um, these guys are about a month old and everyone's still he healthy and happy. Um, everyone's feathers are coming in really well and, and they seem to be gaining weight and growing fairly fairly well. Um, in fact, I, we were all kind of surprised at how big they've gotten so fast. Um, we're going through a tremendous amount of food. Uh, I want to say at least two, if not three times the amount that we're used to. So. Um, I, I don't know what it is with these girls, but for some reason they, they really like what they're eating, so um, we'll, we'll keep it at that. <laughs> that's hopefully the, the reason why, but again, anyone that's ever looking to order chicks, um, we had a, a great experience with Hoover's Hatchery. Alright guys, tip number one is dealing with your ground predator security. Now it is important that you consider that most predators have really one of two options. The first option is they're either going to try to climb over your fencing or they are going to try to dig under your fencing. Now where I live, most animals, uh, at least in my experience, are not going to try to climb over the fencing but rather they are going to try to dig under the fencing. So we of course install a layer of mulch. But under this layer of mulch there is actually uh, approximately two feet of fencing that go out and I left some unburied just for the purpose of this video. It's slightly heavier gauge fencing which is tied into this fencing and then there's actually in some spots a layer of concrete that extends out from each side of each post that is approximately about three inches deep. That's enough to hold down the fencing to keep anything that's trying to dig up the fencing or dig under the fencing out. After that there's a layer of underlayment which will keep out any kind of any kind of weeds uh, it, it also helps some of the water retention for the soil and it also uh, is just going to help make it look a little bit more aesthetically pleasing after that we put a layer of mulch in um, really I see kind of two options is mulch or river stone all right just a little bit of a side tip um, this is not <laughs> doesn't have anything to do with predator proofing your run, uh, but make sure that you have some kind of access to a water line. So um, I am not done. We actually got the underlayment just installed and I, I kind of took my time with that to make sure that uh, you guys could see the progress. But we do have here a host spigot and there are two water lines. One's just buried under the mulch and then there's this one. Um, the first one will go here where I can fill up waters in the run and the second one actually goes out and into our garden area so um, we have a, an additional spigot that will be out there and one that will be over here and then a sprinkler system all right guys tip number two is to install some kind of electric fencing now the fencing that i have here is not quite complete but i did install two lines on the top and an additional line on the bottom now the line on the bottom is going to be best to keep out any kind of uh, ground predators that are going to come up and try to mess with the fence or to check out the fence to begin with. Um, this is great for those raccoons, those possums, cats. Not so great for dogs. Um, for the most part, uh, in my experience, usually a, a dog's nose is, is slightly higher up off the ground. They're not directly touching it, but it will work if necessary. Now, our electric fencing is running actually into our coop where we have electricity ran in, into it. Um, our, our charge controller is in there and then our grounding rod is actually off over here in the corner. Now, I already know there's going to be people asking, you know, what are the two lines up here? Um, these posts are six foot out of the ground, so what predator do I have to worry about that's going to be reaching up six feet while also maintaining contact with the ground? And that's not what those two lines are actually for. Um, as I said, I'm not completely done as of yet, but there will also be two lines installed approximately here 
across the perimeter. And the point is the fence is not on right now, but as a predator makes its way up, it will make contact with the two lines and then receive a shock, fall on the ground and take off. Now, the shock is the first, kind of the first deterrent, and then the fall after that is the second deterrent. This is a non-lethal way of keeping predators outside of your run. Um, and in my experience, it works out great. Just last night, we had approximately 15 raccoons. I, th I think I counted 14 in total um, that had got up onto the run. Uh, quite a few of them touched the fencing. Um, after the fourth or fifth one, I got a little bit of a zap and fell. They take, took off and they, they retreated back to the woods. So tip number two, make sure that you install some kind of reliable electric fencing. All right, guys, we are back inside the run for tip number three. And tip number three is make sure you understand the placement of your run and your coop in relationship to your home. There is nothing worse than waking up in the middle of the night because you hear something outside or maybe you have some motion lights that go off and happen to get up and go across two acres of your property to go check out what's happening. Now, my tip here is to make sure that from your house, you can see the majority of your run and your coop just to make sure everything is okay. Um, also, this is gonna help with maintenance as well. It's far too often, especially where I live out here, we will get a foot or two feet of snow and it becomes very difficult to come out and actually take care of your flock. Now, if you are somewhat situated close enough to your, your home, that becomes much more easy to, to properly maintain everything that, that goes into keeping a healthy and safe flock. Um, everything from fence maintenance to coop maintenance, feeding, watering, you name it. Make sure, as I said, you have some sight line and easy access to where your hens are gonna be. All right, guys, tip number four deals with food inside of your chicken run. Now, far too often I see comments or I hear people tell me that uh, they wake up in the middle of the night and there's all kinds of predators all over their fencing, inside their run, and they wanna know why that is. And generally speaking, the first question I ask is, do you have food inside your run? And almost always everyone says yes. Now, one of the best benefits of having chickens is you will not have any table scraps left over for the most part. Chickens will eat just about anything and they have a very broad diet and are able to digest just about anything. So when we're adding food scraps into our chicken run, we do wanna make sure that we are cleaning those up by the end of the day. I always recommend uh, to people that if you eat a late dinner, save those scraps to the following morning, toss them in in the morning when you're leaving for work or when you wake up, and to let your chickens kind of slowly eat at them through the day. Now, there is nothing, nothing that sends out more of an invitation to predators than when we leave food out overnight. We don't want to be drawing in predators more than what we need to, and our, our hens are actually going to be doing that quite a bit on their own, um, either from their their droppings or their general scent. Predators know they're here and they're gonna to wanna to do everything they can to try to get to them. So us leaving food inside of the run is generally a big mistake. All right guys, tip number five is to complete maintenance of your coop and run as it becomes an issue. Now every day, the first thing I do in the morning is I go out and make sure that the hens have the food and the water that they will need for the day, and I collect eggs. After that, I spend about 60 seconds literally just walking around the perimeter of the run just to make sure that there isn't any kind of holes that have been dug up for any from any predators, and to just make sure that there's not any holes in my fencing or any issues that may become a risk for my hens throughout the day. Now it's kind of hard to see right here, but I did have a piece of wood that fell on the fencing and ripped a hole into it. So that is something that I'm gonna take care of today. Um, I did start putting down some logs back here too because I did have something that was trying to dig up underneath and I just wanted to make sure that I'm doing everything that I can to, to keep my flock safe and healthy. Now far too often I hear people say, you know, I go out and I collect the eggs and that's pretty much it. And then uh, they wonder why I lost, they lost, you know, five or six hens one night. And lo and behold, they'll go out and they'll do a walk around and they'll find a big hole in their fencing or a hole in the base of their fencing. And that's something that really they should have caught before it got as big of an issue as, as it did. Now with that said, it, it doesn't mean that you're not gonna lose hens. Um, I could have a hawk fly down and, and, and take one at any point. Again, where I live out here, 
there are hawks, but I've, I've actually never seen any. If I did start to see any, or if I did lose any hens, I would put up some kind of mesh netting up there just to keep them safe. But again, that's not an issue that I have to worry about. Again, these tips are only tips that are really relevant for environments that are similar to mine. Now, if you live somewhere where you're gonna have more of an issue with larger predators, you're gonna to wanna to look into other ways uh, and other tips that might help you out a little bit better. Um, if you have bobcats, bears, anything like that, my fencing's not gonna work for you. You're gonna need something that's thicker, more of a livestock gating. Um, but again, where I am, this is perfect for me. I went an inexpensive route, but a route that was going to work and keep my hens safe. Something that looked aesthetically pleasing, even though it's kind of a mess right now and we're still cleaning up. Again, it's something that's going to work out great. So if you have any questions or comments about ways to predator proof your run or you're running into sp any specific issues, please leave a comment in the, in the uh, section below and we'll answer your questions hopefully within a day or two. Uh, if you enjoyed the content here and you want to see more of these top five videos, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. We love hearing uh, all the support that we have so far on our channel. We've been getting a ton of private messages, but please, you know, show your support by subscribing. Um, right now we only have 12 subscribers and we are trying to grow our subscriber base. As always, thank you for joining us on today's channel. And don't forget to subscribe.